I'm going to start kind of from the beginning, and I want to go through the things that are really important. If you miss some of these, your life is going to be unnecessarily difficult, okay? Um, now, if, if you know exactly what you're doing in a certain area, and you know why, and you see something that you disagree with me, but you know why you want it to be different, fine. I have no problem with that. Um, but if you don't already have clarity in how you want to do a certain area here, then I would encourage you just to try what I'm I'm suggesting because 80% of the time, uh, it, it, it works great and you don't even have to think about it. Okay. Um, so I didn't, uh, I'm going to come back to build scripts. Um, uh, Cesar, you have a question. I'm going to come back to build scripts. Uh, my build script is vanilla PowerShell. It is just PowerShell. It is just scripting. Super simple. Um, I've, I've looked at with interest, the, uh, cake, um, tool C sharp make, and, um, it, it's really interesting. And I, I plan to do some more, uh, trying out investigation. But um, when you're talking about scripting, PowerShell is effectively the Microsoft scripting language. And it's just so simple, so easy. Something, hmm, should I introduce another tool? Well, you know what? I, for now, I've concluded, if you don't need it yet, don't pull in additional tools yet. And so um, I encourage you to go to the Git, GitHub repository that I shared with you and literally just go ahead and use that build script. If it's if it's useful, clone the entire repository, look at the build script. Most of the variables have been extracted uh, or most of the specific uh, magic strings have been extracted to variables at the top of the file. So you can just change some of those variables and it has all the things you need. But when you're thinking about how to um, start it starts with source control. You need source control. Git has won the source control battles. Um, and we're no longer talking about other source control systems like Subversion or Mercurial. Um, we're using Git. All right. You want to make sure that you only have one application per Git repository. And when I say one application, I mean one Visual Studio solution. It is perfectly fine to have a web application, a backend batch job, and a database project in one Visual Studio solution, and they're built together, they're packaged together, that they are one, architecturally, they are one logical application, um, but you have multiple things that need to be deployed, but the multiple things that need to be deployed are still versioned the same. And so if they're versioned the same, then architecturally they are one application, you put them in the same Git repository. So you may have a software system that, you choose to decompose into multiple um, software applications and you put each of those software applications in its own dedicated Git repository. And that's great. What you don't want to accidentally do is create this custom, custom directory tree in your Git repository and have several applications one or two levels down um, because all of the DevOps automation tooling out there in the industry is optimized to run on the contents of an entire Git repository. Uh, it, it's made to clone the entire repository, build whatever is in the repository, test whatever is in the repository. Um, not saying that that technically it's impossible to do it. It is possible, but you are going to be signing up for a lot more custom work yourself, um, and you're going to get a lot more automatic help from all of the tooling and products out there in the industry if you just follow this rule of thumb one Visual Studio solution per Git repository. And applications that you've probably seen, some applications you've inherited, have gotten so big where you don't want to load it up all into one Visual Studio solution. You end up having different solution files that only load a subset of the projects and you have multiple solution files, but it's on the same set of projects. Well, you've already got a mess on your hands when you get to that point. And so, uh, you know, you're kind of kind of breaking the rules already. But if you're in iteration zero and you're starting a new application, we're not talking about Brownfield, you're starting a new application, this is the way to go. One Visual Studio solution with, you know, seven to 10 projects in it, and that goes in one Git repository. And then your, your DevOps automation flows 
from that one Git repository. Then if you have 10, 20 different Git repositories because you have 10, 20 um, software applications, you're gonna have 10 or 20 DevOps environments, DevOps pipelines, and you're gonna have another instance of all these things that I'm talking about. 